So you went through the book of shaders and you start doing your own code and your own sketches, you feel comfortable, and now you want to take it to the next step, which is uh, hook some MIDI driver and like do some live performance, for example, or just improve your pipeline. So today what I want to show you is a program I have been working on in order to connect your shaders to a MIDI controller, actually to connect this MIDI controller to any OCC, but today we're going to limit it to learning about how to connect it to shaders because I think it's pretty cool. So let's jump in. So this is the book of shader um, editor. So, it's, so you probably are familiar with it. Uh, and here we're going to sketch something that we can then uh, attach a knob to it. So first of all, I want to make the color not, but the background color not um, black, but a little gray. So I will, in the future, I can like um, differentiate from the background. And then I'm gonna put here, um, have one of the functions. So we're gonna use some of the um, the functions that are in the Pixel Spirit deck, which is a very useful tool. It's full of magic functions that you will use for your shaders. And the one that we're searching for now is stroke. To where we were working, we don't need to define an anti-alias step. What we want is be able to say that we want to make a stroke over the x-axis in the half of the screen and with a width of 0 0.1. Oh, probably too big, mm. better there. So now, I want to explain, this is the width of the line, this is the uh, axis where it's operating, and this is, um, this is the variable that we want to control, which is where on, on, over this axis. And just to explain and make it clear, this fader goes to, this goes between zero and one. So when it's in zero, it's close to the left side, and when it's in one, it's close to the right side. So we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna remove here things that we don't use from here, and we're gonna add our uniform. It's gonna be a float, and this U fader is going to be the uniform that is going to be controlling this. So I'm gonna put U fader there. And right now it's in, um, it's in zero, but the objective is to attach it to this key, which in this control is the key number zero. So in order to do that, now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna download this, I'm gonna export it, download file. Um, I'm gonna do okay. And then I'm gonna copy it from my um, download fo folder. Uh, is this one? And it's gonna we're gonna gonna test zero zero dot frag. So we're gonna launch it in GLSL Viewer. And for those that doesn't know, GLSL Viewer is a sandbox in the same way that that app, uh, applica online application. Um, was just running the shader in a little sandbox. This is a sandbox that is native, that it runs directly from the command. And is, I use it all the time. Test 00.frag, and this will launch our program. As you can see, um, this is not very interesting right now, but uh, the program is loaded and, oh, we lost it. So we're gonna launch it with a, with slash L, which means live mode, which uh, means that now it will be on top. So there's two ways to send commands to GLSL Viewer. One is through the command in, which is the command here. So if you put help, you see that there is it's accepting commands. And when it doesn't found a command, you're not putting a predefined command, it will try to guess that it's a uniform. So in this case, you fader, we're gonna type you fader and we're gonna put 0 0.5 and by putting 0 0.5 this line should go to the middle we did it excellent so let's exit there and open the this uh, little application 
after installing it, right? Called MIDI Guider, which is this uh, application that I have been working that accepts uh, MIDI uh, events and spits OCC calls. And to do that uh, translation and that mapping, use a YAML file. So let's you open that YAML file. Test um, 00.yaml in this case. So this is it. It's very simple. This configuration file, it will listen for uh, something, a device called nano control or start with nano control. See that you can use um, wildcards and it's going to listen to event to key number zero and when it land, launch is going to associate it with the UF, with um, the address u fader and the and say is saying that the type is going to be a scholar let's launch this program midi guider test 00 yaml and and this will the output of this is going to be a csv this, which is a comma separated value, which is the same thing that uh, is happening in the what is waiting GLS of viewer, and also in through OCC import 8000. So then the second thing that we're gonna do is um, connecting this to GLS of viewer. But first, let's give it a try and let's move our fader up and down. And you will see that is correctly generating events, um, but the value goes between zero and, 200, uh, and 127, which is the default uh, maximum for uh, MIDI's. So what we need to do is go back to our uh, configuration file here, and we are going to say that we want to map the value between zero and one. And now I'm gonna save this. I need to, uh, MIDI Guyver doesn't hot reload yet, but so I need to like rerun it. And now you will see that our, when I move the fader, it moves between zero and one. So maximum is one, minimum is zero. So this program is ready to pair with GLS of Viewer. We need to tell GLS of Viewer that it needs to be listening to import 8000. We will open port 8000 and there you go. Now it will is receiving and every time that I move this, it moves also um, GLSL Viewer. So this is how we connect GLSL Viewer or MIDI Guyver to any OCC plugin or this is how GLSL Viewer can like uh, modify uniforms with um, any uh, key. There's one more thing I want to show, or yeah, there's one more thing that I want to show, which is how to um, change, uh, generate um, the fines. So if we go back, let's close, uh, let's temporarily close this. I'm gonna move this aside for a second so I can work um, let's stop MIDI and there is one type of there's another type of uh, events which are very specific which is the one related to buttons so I know that this button key the, um, the number is 32 so we are going to be listen to uh, key 32 the name is going to be button and the type is going to be a button I guess I should put my button so now we are going to rerun um, we're going to rerun our MIDI guide program and I want to show you that when I press this button and I'm going to put it closer it generates an on when I press and an off when I release. That this means it's like giving a 127 value when it's pressed and a um, zero value when it's released. So 
so what we, what we probably want is something that remembers the state. So what we are going to do is going to replace the type here for a toggle. Toggle and we're gonna, and here we go. We're going to do the same. And now when I press and I release, the state stays. And when I press again, it turns off. And you're probably asking, how is this useful? So there is a second. Um, let me show you. So we're going to um, close, close this. And this becomes more useful when I map it. So I'm going to say I want to map the on to say define, um, define magenta and off to undefined magenta what I'm doing here is I'm associating this um, I'm associating this uh, the pressing on the bottom and the release of the bottom to sending a whole different address with a specific um, map so if I run this and when I press here, so when it, what is happening here is when I press, it's defining magenta and when I, I press again, it's undefining it. And why this is important? This is important because um, GLSL viewer, uh, one of the, let's open the, the, the shader here. GLSL viewer, you can, with the commands define and undefine, you can define uh, defines. You can add keywords. So in this case here, I'm um, I'm setting the background as gray. So if I want to say if define magenta, I'm going to set up the background to magenta. So it's going to be all one in the red channel and in the blue channel and this gives magenta else it's going to be the back the great background and if let's close this let's exit this and let's uh, run jealous of beer so now our we have it's going to still connected the fader so when I move the fader it goes between one side and the other one and when I press this it change it define magenta so in the shader it will hijack the setting of the gray and now I can control so just with these two things I want to uh, I think you can like figure out how to like use it for your own setup and I feel that you can, this will give you a lot of um, space to play and experiment. And um, I will come back with more of this kind of tutorials. I'm, I'm new, obviously, to making this kind of tutorials. So um, thank you for your patience and I hopefully it will become better. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to show you more about um, this little app that I'm working and GLSL viewer. Bye-bye. Thank you.